Good morning, PCM family. This is Pastor Merrick Carter coming to you live from lovely Oxnard, California. I pray that everyone has had a wonderful week thus far. And, uh, and I've always said, when you are amongst the living in your right state of mind, you are truly blessed. Um, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, we're going to have our potluck. This is applicable to those that are local. We're going to have our potluck next um, Sunday after the second service. Uh, because it's going to be Palm Sunday, and because usually we have it on the last Sunday, but because of Easter, that's just not going to work. So we're going to have it on the fourth Sunday. We have five Sundays this month. We're having it on the fourth Sunday, and that'll be next Sunday after the second service. So if you're local or you want to come out and fellowship with us and eat, break bread, enjoy each other's company, we cordially, you are cordially invited. So we have that going on there as well. I also want to... Um, encourage uh, everyone watching here uh, to uh, keep this great nation in prayer because there's a lot going on around the world, uh, going on, uh, you know, in Israel and Ukraine, Russia. Uh, it, it's just, it's not good. And we just have to be more prayerful more now than ever before. So just, you know, Pray for this great nation and pray for the leadership in this country because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that there's a lot of division. And the Bible clearly tells us a house that is divided will what? It'll fall. So, and please don't get into this, well, you know, these Democrats don't know what they're doing or no, these Republicans don't know. It doesn't matter. God puts who he wants in. In the meantime, it's our responsibility as Christians is to pray for this great nation and that God's will be done. Amen? I just had to throw that out there. Okay, having said that, uh, uh, we're going to take up our tithes and our offerings. God loves a cheerful giver. And um, this ministry is solely supported on your giving. And uh, there's a couple of ways you can go about it. We have uh, an app called Tithely. It's an extremely secure app. You can go that route. Uh, just make sure if you use Tithely, put in Pacific Coast Ministries if you've never done it before. And of course, you can go to our website, PacificCoastMinistries.com. On the homepage, on the top where it says giving, you can go that route as well. And also, oh, and there's also a QR code you can use as well, man. Uh, technician over there was talking about the QR code, and it'd be very, I'm old school. I'm not even sure how that works. Amen. So, Amen. For you people that know about QR codes, you can go that route as well. <laughs> Praise God. Um, what else? And also, I, I, I want to thank all of you who helped support this ministry. God bless you. You partnered with us and you, you, uh, you consider this your church, and we thank you for that. And there's some of you, this is not your home church, but you still support, and we really appreciate that. But I have to say this. If you belong to another ministry, another church, Please take care of your church and your pastor, <clears throat> your pastor first. And once you do that, you have anything left over that you're able to bless us, we really and truly appreciate it. Amen? Amen. And of course, if you want to bless me, the pastor, just make sure you uh, put the love offering. If you don't put the love offering, it goes to our church. So you can go that route, however you, the Lord is laying upon your heart. But take care of your church and your pastor first. I don't want to take anything away from anybody. Amen? Amen. All right. Having said that, let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of prayer. We thank you for those that are giving, that you bless them in a mighty way, Father. The monies received will be used in a way that will be pleasing and that we can do all that we can to help build your kingdom. Father, we pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to conclude... I beg your pardon, continue our series on th there's protection in God's direction. And we're also going to uh, conclude it, uh, part two. There's protection in God's direction. I want to read the base text found in uh, Nahum chapter 1, verses 7 through 8. And it reads as thus, just to kind of go over what we went over thus far, what we went over last week. Nahum writes, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. But with an overwhelming flood, he will make 
an end of Nineveh. He will pursue his foes into the realm of darkness. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I pray that as I break the bread of life that you'll teach and preach mighty through me. And as you do this, I pray those that are here, those that are watching, will be helped and encouraged so that we can all be the very best we can be for you. Father, we pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. There's protection in God's direction. Now, just to kind of go over right quick, for those of you who might have missed last week, this is a small uh, minor prophet. Just because it's a small book, I think it has three chapters, doesn't mean that the book is not significant. It's very significant, very important. This book was an oracle against Nineveh. Now remember, Nineveh was the capital of Assyria, and this was an extremely wicked nation. They were brutal. They were the superpower of its day. It has been well documented, the, 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 the horrific things that they did to their captors when they conquered a nation. They were terrible. You see, they have already, the Assyrians have already destroyed Samaria, which resulted in the captivity of the northern kingdom of Israel. And since that had happened, uh, they were poised to, uh, to, um, to be a threat to Judah. Judah was the southern part of Israel. Amen? Uh, let's see what else we got here. So we know, and, and so there was, there was a concern, there was a worry. So having said that, uh, Nahum is writing this particular passage of Scripture, trying to bring comfort to the Jewish people in the southern region of Israel, in Judah, reminding them to stay on course Trust in God, and you're going to be okay, right? And blessed be to God, we find that, um, and, and on top of that, we talked about how Nineveh, uh, uh, Assyria, was going to be eventually destroyed. And incidentally, Judah never got, um, was never overthrown by Assyria. They came close to it. But God had intervened, and it never happened because they stayed the course. They did what they were supposed to do. They trusted in God. And eventually we find, history tells us, a few years down the road, the Babylonians overthrew the Assyrians. And, of course, eventually, years later, uh, Judah was uh, des destroyed, the temple and all, because they were disobedient to God. They kind of went off the beaten path and did things they had they had no business doing, getting caught up in idolatry, which is the worshiping of other gods, not trusting in God, not listening to the warnings that God had, would send to his prophets to let his people know to get their act together. They didn't, they didn't want, want to hear it. So eventually judgment fell upon Judah and they were overthrown and they were in captivity for 70 years. They were overthrown by the, by the Babylonians, which was led at that time by Nebuchadnezzar. But we have here, last week, we talked about the points was go in the direction God has for you. We know the importance of this. You cannot go east and God is telling you to go west. You can do it, but it's not going to work out well for you. Then we talked about trusting in the Lord. We have to trust in God with all of our heart. And the only way that's going to be able to happen is by developing a relationship with him through prayer, through fasting, through fellowship, um, through studying his, his word. And of course, we ended by talking about you must be yourself for God. You cannot put on these facades trying to be something that you're not. You are unique and you are special in the eyes of God. And God expects us to be ourselves, not being a phony. Amen. I'm talking about this protection in God's direction. As long as you're doing and going in the direction God would have for you, it's going to be all right. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy but it's going to be all right. But today my subtitle is going to be The Journey. The, the Journey. Oftentimes uh, we, have, we make the mistake by focusing so much on the destination we're paying little or no attention to the journey. And, 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 and the journey is just as important as the destination. Because the journey itself is preparing you for the destination whether you know it or not. 
If you've ever gone on a long uh, uh, ride across country or wherever, on, on a journey, on a bus or a plane or whatever, you know, you really enjoy the journey itself. You look forward to the destination, but you enjoy the journey. You, 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 if, you go, if you're driving across country, you look and you sightsee and say, wow, you even may, may make stops at various places to kind of explore. The journey is beautiful. That's how life is. Remember, the Bible tells us, <clears throat> tells us that we're a mere, mere pilgrims that's just passing through. And there's far too many of us are so fixated on the destination. Now, let me, let me back up here. I'm not suggesting that we're not supposed to be excited about our destination, but we have to understand the journey is just as important. There's no accident you find people reaching their destination and, and they're unable to handle it. They're unhappy. They thought it was going to be more than what it really was. They're stressed out. Oftentimes that comes because they really didn't take time to enjoy the journey. I got to say this. Uh, God has really blessed me in my ministry as a pastor here. I coach football, college football, and, and um, there have been college coaches that have gone all their, gone their entire career without ever winning any kind of championship. Most coaches, that's what happens. And here you've got myself as a specialist and as a pastor or character development coach. And here I have got nine rings. What a blessing, nine rings. And one of the rings was because we won a bowl game. And I remember one of the coaches, great guy, he said, I don't want that ring at all. I want the championship ring. And I'm looking at this young brother. And I said, you know, he's not understanding. He's not enjoying the journey. He's so fixated on the destination, he's not enjoying, uh, enjoying the journey. And a lot of that is just being competitive, which is cool. I'm saying all that to say this, ladies and gentlemen. When things come your way while you're on your journey, and God may be rewarding you for that, don't kick it to the curb or turn it down <coughs> if it's really important. Enjoy the journey. Some of you may be going on a diet. You're trying to lose weight. You want to lose 20 pounds. You want to lose 30 pounds. You get on the scale uh, every week and you find like, man, I only lost two pounds. Well, you know what? And you get angry and mad. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, don't get angry and mad because you did lose two pounds. <coughs> it takes time. So you have to work on it. <coughs> Excuse me. Something got stuck in my throat. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to get through it. I'm okay, y'all. I don't need the high, the high mint re remove. What it, anyway, <laughs> people looking at me like, yikes. Okay, I'm okay, I'm okay now. Um, enjoy the journey. Things are going to pop up. Enjoy it. Another problem that people run into when they don't enjoy the journey is once they get to where they're at, they fall hard. And I go back to the weight, uh, losing weight. You get mad. I only lost two pounds. You lost two pounds. That was two pounds lighter than what you were last week. No, you didn't reach the goal you may have wanted, but you still, you're on that journey. It takes time. The problem is, ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a microwave society. Everybody wants stuff right now. You that, this life doesn't work that way. At times, it, it would be nice if it did, but it does not work that way. Amen? So we have to be mindful of the journey. Well, the question is, how do we take the journey in life? The first thing you find in your notes is, one, enjoy and grow in your journey. Enjoy and grow in your journey. The Bible tells us in John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the fullest or have it more abundantly. Even though we may run into some uh, uh, tough patches in life, God loves us. Jesus paid the ultimate price. We have been given a joy that God has given us and the world cannot take away. So God wants us to have an enjoyable life. 
Now, a lot of people will equate enjoyable with material things. Now, it's nice to have some material things. Grant, I get it. But I've often said there's a lot of people with a lot of money, a lot of material stuff, and they're miserable as all get out. They have no peace from within. They're unhappy. It's like an itch they simply cannot scratch. And that is no way to live. So as, you, as we grow and as we all take our journey, enjoy it. Now, as believers in Christ, uh, the roads that we take may differ. One person's road may be windy, another person's road may be much straighter, but it's all leading to the same place that's Calvary. So whatever your journey in life is, enjoy it and grow from it, uh, grow from it and learn. Amen? I'm talking about the journey and there's protection in God's direction. The second point we want to drive home here is do what's right in the eyes of God. On your journey, you got to do the right thing. You can't do things you haven't any business doing thinking you're going to get away with it. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 21, Paul said, For we, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, for we are taking pains to do what is right, not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of men. The reason why Judah got in trouble. They started out with a bang, but they start straying off doing their own thing and judgment fell upon them. In fact, if you go back, you'll find that um, when Nahum was giving this uh, um, prophecy, a hundred years before that time, the Bible tells us in Jonah that, that Nineveh was an extremely wicked, wick, wicked place, but they repented because Jonah told them about their sins and if they don't repent destruction is going to fall upon them and they repented in fact it is the largest revival recorded in the Bible but what happened was many years passed and, and people they were dying off and you got people coming up start going back started going back to their old ways and eventually they, they, they got to destroyed the prize is not given to the swift, but those that endure. You know, we're going to get into that in a little, little, in a little bit, but you have to do what's right in the eyes of God. And sometimes that can be a challenge. I, I, I get it. Because we're dealing in a society that is contrary to the ways of God. We're dealing with dark forces that are continually lurking and trying to influence God's people, and we're also having to uh, contend with the flesh. But the Bible tells us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So do what's right in the eyes of God. I promise you this, if you do that in the long run, you will always come out ahead. Amen? Let's recap it. We're going to tie this thing off here. I'm talking about this protection in God's direction and the journey. And how do we take the journey? We take the journey by one, enjoy and grow in your journey. I love life. Life is good. It has its ups and downs. I get it. We all go through it. But overall, life is good. The second point is do what's right in the eyes of God. Do the right thing. Not just before man, but behind closed doors, a true person's character is, is, can be measured by not what they do in front of others, but what they do behind closed doors. So do what's right in the eyes of God. That's very, very important. And last but not least, pace yourself on your journey. Pace yourself on your journey. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, it says, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. I'm talking about the journey. Ladies and gentlemen, the biggest mistake that I have found, I've been in church all of my life, and what I have found through the years, and I am no super Christian, and I'm all this, that, and a bag of potato chips, far from it. But something I've learned is you have to learn to spiritually pace yourself. You have to stop comparing yourself to the person next to you. When I used to run marathons, 
when I used to compete in triathlons, doing the Ironman and all that kind of good, good stuff, I understood that I was not built to be an endurance athlete. That's just that I'm just I'm a big linebacker, football kind of built kind of kind of guy. I'm just not built. So whenever I ran a marathon, I understood I had to pace myself. I had to tell you this, I, and I'm you. I'm going somewhere with this. I ran uh, one marathon. I'll never forget this. And this was my first one. And I was kind of nervous, excited at the same time. And I was training uh, uh, for other things that I was involved in. And I remember when I got there early, I was stretching. I was looking at some, some of the people there. And I, I have to tell you, and I don't mean any, any disrespect uh, to anybody, but there were some people I saw, especially some, some of the women, they were kind of they were kind of on the heavy side. And I said, oh, praise God, I'm, I'm not going to be coming last in this one here. And this particular race consisted only of about 1,500 people, so it wasn't a big race. It wasn't like the LA Marathon, you got 20, 30,000 people and you can just be, no, this was much smaller. And I'm thinking, oh, I got this, you know. So when the gun goes off, I get to run it and all of my training went out the window. What, are, what do I do? I'm going out hard, I'm getting caught up in the hype, and, and I'm like, I got this, and I'm, and I'm passing some of these women, and there were some dudes that were, they were, they were pretty, I'm talking healthy, amen? I'm going to leave it at that. And I got probably about seven miles in, and I said, oh boy, Houston, we got a problem. And at the halfway point, at around 13 some odd miles, I was starting to hurt. And I was let, the people I passed at first, they were passing me up. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere with this. Because this happens to many of y'all spiritually. They're passing me up. First, I'm talking smack to myself. I would never say anything negative about anybody else, but oh, I got this, you know. I, 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 they all start passing me. I said, oh man, you know, and I'm, I'm sitting here hurting. And I remember, I'll never forget this, I was running, and I don't mean any disrespect to anybody, just I want to be clear about this, but I was running and uh, jogging, I was going kind of slow, and I'm thinking, man, you know, everybody passed me up, and I knew I wasn't at the end, and then I heard this voice saying, I'm going to catch up with him, I'm going to catch up with him. Oh, I caught up with him, and I looked, the guy must have been 80 years old, I said, I'd just be doggone. I'll never forget that. I finished the race, but I didn't get the time I knew that I was capable of, of, of obtaining because I didn't run the race properly. What am I saying? Some of you right now, you're not receiving various things in life that you could have received because you've chosen not to run the spiritual race properly. You chose not to pace yourself. You're trying to be judgmental because this person over here is doing this and this person over here is doing that and you think you're super Christian. You think you got a little education. You know a little bit about the Bible and all of a sudden you roll that in the back of potato chips not understanding that the more that you know the more that you learn the more you're going to be accountable for. Not understanding that the spiritual forces that are out there are going to attack you and you never saw it coming. It doesn't mean that you're going to hell. It doesn't mean that, that you're playing with God. What it means is you have to learn as you run this spiritual race to pace yourself properly. Period. And there's so many of God's people are not doing that. And understand, when you're running this spiritual race, the people that you're running with, Many of them will not be with you at the end. Because there are a lot of people, when I ran that marathon, they didn't finish. And now some of them didn't finish. They looked the part. They're like, man, this, this is big. No, some of them didn't finish because they got, either they got injured. Some of them didn't finish because they didn't prepare properly. They just thought they could get out there and run a 26.2 mile run and that's just, it's going to be easy, easy peasy. No. And some didn't finish because they had absolutely no mental toughness. As believers in Christ, as I close this out here, 
we got to have spiritual toughness for Christ. The Bible says we have to examine ourselves. Where are we spiritually? Stop trying to impress other people. Be real with yourself, as I've alluded to you earlier. You have to be real with yourself. You have to understand, where am I? A lot of people want to become leaders in the church because they know the Bible inside and out, but behind closed doors, they're an absolute debacle. Now, let me be clear. I'm not suggesting legalism. No, we don't get to heaven based upon our works. But I, what I am telling you is we oftentimes look at the surface and not paying any attention behind the scenes. And you think people are all that in the back of potato chips and, and because a person that you may be sitting next to or you may see and you realize, oh man, this person, they got all this, that, and the other, they did this, I want to do it too. And you start doing that, not understanding what that individual may have had to go through to get to where they're at. Where on the other hand, you wouldn't want to be bothered. Like no way, I would love to be there, but I'm not willing to sacrifice this to get that, period. I'm just go run my pace. I'm going to train as best I can in God's word, learn all that I possibly can, do the best I can, and be real with myself in areas that I need to work on, I'm going to work on it, and areas that I'm strong on, I'm going to try to be stronger. That's all I can do, and understand that this race is going to take place until the day I leave this world, period. You do not run the touchdown until it's over. No one is perfect. The Bible said all is sin and falls short of, of the glory of God. But it is a fight. And the Bible says fight the good fight. Paul said I fight, I fight the good fight. You don't give up. You got to have that spiritual toughness and you keep moving forward. If you slip and fall, you repent, you pick yourself up and you keep going forward. Not looking around making excuses trying to fit, find out someone who you can blame because you didn't achieve what you thought you could have achieved. And you didn't achieve it because of your arrogance. Not being honest with yourself. Trying to impress other people, spiritually speaking. You want to get here and recite the Bible backwards and forwards, which is fantastic. But your spiritual well-being is really struggling. There are things in your life you are really, really, really struggling with. And you're not addressing it. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. Listen, there's protection in God's direction. And there's a journey. All of us are on it. Figuratively speaking, all of us are in this marathon. The question is, how are you running it? Are you trying to impress getting caught up in the hype? You look at this individual here or this situation or this particular ministry here and, and, and you want to be all that in a bag of chips? You have to pace yourself. And I got to say this, and, and, and I'm going to close it out here because this is something God, thank you, Holy Spirit. There's some of you are watching me. You really love God. You love God with all your heart. But your priorities are mixed up. Things that you should be focusing on, things that you know that you should be doing to help build the kingdom of heaven, you decided to do other things. You may be at a church somewhere and the pastor can really use your support and your help. And instead of you being supportive and helpful to the way you really could be, your priorities are elsewhere's. <clears throat> excuse me do you think God is pleased with that hmm you got to go in the direction God would have for you and you'll make it because the Bible said if God is for us who can be against us listen I hope what I shared with you was helpful and that you'll learn and grow from it <clears throat> And know that you're not in this fight alone. 
Now, some of you watching me, you may not, never have accepted Christ in your life as your personal Savior, and you want to do that. Um, the Bible tells us in John, um, Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. We get saved based upon our faith and belief in Christ. And if you want to do that, I want you to repeat to me, repeat as I say this prayer. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner and I've fallen short. Forgive me of all the wrongs I've ever done. Come into my heart and my life and have me to be the person you intended for me to be. I believe that you died on that cross and rose from the dead for me. And I thank you for that. Father, lead and guide me. I give you the praise. I give you the glory. And his blessings, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. If you said that prayer, praise God, you now belong to the kingdom of heaven. The next thing you want to do is you want to get you a good Bible, a good study Bible. Now, we use the NIV version, okay? Um, <clears throat> and uh, But whatever version that you feel comfortable with. But um, I would also say you might want to start reading in the Gospel of John. That's a good place to start to learn all you can about Christ. Um, do not read the Bible like you're reading a novel, okay? In other words, you're going to start in Genesis, and, and, and I'm going to begin in Genesis, and I'm going to read the whole Bible all the way through and end in Revelation. Because there's a high probability you'll probably stop when you get to Leviticus. Because when they start getting through all the rules and all that, he's like, oh, man, you know. No. Start in John, and um, get involved in a Bible study. Find a church where you feel comfortable. You may have to visit several churches, but you find one where you feel comfortable. If you feel that this is your home church and you're doing it by way of uh, uh, Facebook, or that, we're, fine. we're living in an, in, a, in an era where a lot of people are more comfortable going about it this way. The next thing you want to do is you want to get baptized if you've never been baptized before. Now, being baptized doesn't get you saved. You've already done that through your confession. Being baptized is an outward expression and feeling, uh, an outward expression and feeling of, of, uh, uh, is, an in, is an expression and outward a feeling of an inward confession. I got it all backwards and wrong. Being baptized, he's la laughing at me, is an outward expression of an inward feeling and conviction. That's what I'm trying to say. And get involved in your church. Remember, pace yourself. Pace yourself. Take your time. Because this race is as long as we live on this world, not unless Christ comes for his church, we get caught up in the rapture. I'm praying for the rapture, but pace yourself. And I will say this, as you are on this journey, if this area is in your life where you're struggling, then get the necessary help that you need. Stop blaming other people. That, that really irritates me with some folk. They always want to blame somebody. They're blaming the world because things haven't gone their way. And they think the world has done them wrong, that the world owes us. The world owes you nothing. We have to take responsibility and do what we're supposed to do in the eyes of God and trust God and be honest with God and be honest with ourselves. Amen? I just had to throw that out there. Well, listen, let's close it out in prayer and we'll let you go. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the message that was given. We pray. Father, that those that uh, were here, those that are watching, was helped and encouraged so that we could be the all, that we could be the very best we can be for you. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, before I let you go, just another reminder, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. We're having our potluck, Palm Sunday, because we usually have it on the last Sunday of the month, but because of uh, last Sunday of the month, which is really weird, uh, Easter in March. So we're going to have our... Um, <clears throat> our potluck uh, next Sunday after the second service. Amen? All right. Until then, may God richly bless you and yours.